petitioner, do we have Samantha Young with us? And you'll have to unmute and give us your name for the record, please. Yes, it's Samantha Young. Very good. Uh, and who do you have with you? Um, I have my uh, boyfriend, Kenny Smith. Okay, thank you. Hello. All right, uh, we're gonna if, go ahead and keep your uh, device muted unless you're actively participating, but I appreciate that. Ms. Hanson Grimes? Ashley Hanson Grimes on behalf of Respondent Guardian, Melissa Sanders. Uh, Melissa, if you'd introduce yourself to the court. Yes, I'm the guardian, Melissa Sanders. All right, <clears throat> I see we have some other individuals logged in. Are those uh, witnesses, Ms. Hanson Grimes? They are, Your Honor. Okay, well, we also have Ms. Paula Mary from the department. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, we discussed just briefly uh, yesterday, I believe, or maybe the day before when this case was initially called, that there were some guardianship uh, documents that were produced in uh, response to the court's order for an investigation. Uh, that was narrowed down to simply the guardianship investigation report supplied by Ms. Mary. Uh, so those proposed, those other proposed exhibits have been um, purged from our court file. Did you receive a copy of the investigation, Ms. Hanson Price? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Very okay, good. Uh, Ms. Samantha Young, uh, Deputy Ames, would you swear her in for us, please? Samantha Young. I'm sorry, one more time. Ms. Young, this is Deputy Ames. Can you raise your right hand for me, please, so I can swear you in? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God? Yes. Okay, Ms. Samantha Young, did you receive a copy of the guardianship investigation? Yes, I did yesterday, uh, yesterday when we was at court. Very good, all right. Uh, do you still wish uh, to ask the court to terminate the minor guardianship and return the child uh, to you? Yes, I do. All right, uh, tell me uh, in your own words uh, why you think I should do that. Okay. Um... So, uh, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I wrote a letter and uh, I'm just going to rewrite off the letter so that way I don't mess up any of my wording or forget anything. Um, I said, uh, Brooklyn, I said, why do I feel or believe that I would be a better for Brooklyn to be in my care? Brooklyn needs her mother just as much as any other child needs their parents. There is nobody else in this world who could or can provide her with the amount of care or love that a mother has for their children. I have finally created a foundation where I'm more than capable to be the mother for, for, my, daughter, for my daughter and her needs. I have worked very diligently and selflessly to be a, very, a to be a better mother to my child. I have never gave up, no matter how hard the obstacles ahead were. I have always I have always put my daughter's well being to the top of the priorities. I feel I have always made decisions on on the behalf of her best interest, regardless of how the situations may have affected me. I will always continue to do what I think is best for my children. Every child yearns for the love from their blood family. I have established good, healthy relationships with my immediate family and peers. I am able to provide Brooklyn a loving, safe home and environment, the stability and routine, routine life that she requires, that she requires. Okay. Uh, questions, uh, Ms. Hanson Grimes? Uh, would we consider that her opening statement, Your Honor? or her testimony. Did you want to make an opening statement? Is that why you're asking me that question? I'm asking if the court would is considering that her opening statement or if that's a, essentially her direct of herself. Um, uh, well, Ms. Young, is there anything else that you would have said by way of opening statement that would be different than uh, testimony? Uh, no, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially her position. So. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Young, yeah. how many places have you lived in the last year? In the last year, I've lived in two different places. Okay. And where were they? Uh, one was uh, in the state of Maryland. And then the second place that I've lived is here at, with my father. Okay. And what were you doing in Maryland? 
um, I was uh, in a relationship with somebody and it wasn't a very good relationship and it resulted in me coming home and asking my father to help me, um, you know, continue the goals that I've wanted to, that I've had and had ever since I've given, you know, or asked Melissa to help with, you know, getting my daughter in a stable environment until I was able to, to take over. Okay. So in the last year you lived in the state of Mar Maryland in a relationship that was not with the man that is next to you. Correct. Okay. Is the man from Maryland, is he the father of your child? Uh, no, and there's no man from Maryland. Okay. So um, whoever you were residing with in the state of Maryland is not related to the child that you're carrying. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you live currently with your father? I do. And um, you had stated to the um, DHS worker who came to visit you that your father was pushing for you to get Brooklyn back. Is that correct? No. So, no, it wasn't pushing. It wasn't like he is forcing me to get my daughter back. It was obviously a misplacement of wording. And it was more of an encouragement and saying that, hey, uh, I support what you want to do and I'm here to help you is how it was worded. Okay, so why do you believe that the DHS worker who carefully writes reports would say that would misstate you? Probably for the same reason that a lot of the there's misunderstanding throughout the whole investigation that I've seen. That's not true. Um, that's why I would probably say that maybe uh, that was her 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 verbiage and her um, moral of what I was saying. Um, I think that the, it can be mis interpret it um but no it was definitely an encouragement and he he's not no one's pushing me to get my daughter back i want my daughter back because it's my daughter okay the last time that you had uh care in custody of brooklyn was in 2017 is that correct Incorrect. no that's not correct i was not in custody of care of her my mother was so you have not had her since before 2017 correct Okay, so she's nine years old, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, she is. So for more than half of her life, she has lived outside of your care and custody, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Okay, do you provide financial support to the guardian? Uh, well, if need be, yes, I've always offered to do anything. She's never asked or said that Brooklyn's has needed anything. And so it was supposed to be a placement for me to establish a a financial a stability on home and just it's it was it was it was a mutual understanding for me to get back on my feet and regain the responsibility as an adult and make decisions for my daughter so have you provided no cash assistance to the guardian correct no i have not okay. Did you report the incident regarding your brother and your daughter uh, to the police this summer? I did, yes. Um, I've also reported to mental health and had hit a 72-hour hold put on to him um, as soon as I found out of the matter because I wasn't told of this matter or even brought to my knowledge or to anybody's knowledge until, you know, um, well after she was gone. And then your brother confessed to you, is that correct? He, yes, that's how I found out. Okay. And so, um, and then you immediately notified law enforcement that he had indeed assaulted your daughter? No, not immediately. No, not immediately. Okay. And why not? Um, because I handled it the best way that I thought I, uh, that I was handling it where, you know, it's a, it's a family matter and we were both residing underneath our father's house. And so um, I didn't really know how to handle the situation. I was pretty upset and I didn't want to make an assumption and accuse somebody of doing something just because he could have been mad at me or whatever the case may have been. So I wanted to call my daughter and clarify it with her. And once I got clarification with her, uh, I talked to a caseworker. She came out and she seen that there was no immediate danger and then proceeded on. And I've continuously tried to stay in contact with Detective Goff and he has never returned any of my phone calls. I've even went down there and talked to a police officer who told me that he was the one that took the investigation downtown to Hamilton County. And I've yet to get a response back from anybody. So it's kind of like I've been shunned out of, you know, the whole matter. 
Okay, Ms. Young, can I please just have you answer the questions that I ask instead of going on and on and on? Okay. I, no, I am. Okay. So when he confessed to you, you thought it was a family matter and you were just going to handle it within your family. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. So you're, so you're, again, you're, you're taking my words and, and, and like putting a twist on it. No, okay. did I you, didn't handle it. Ms. Young? No, no. Okay. Did he, did you see anything between the two of them that you were concerned regarding his behavior with your daughter? I mean, no, I thought that they, I, I had, I had feeling that they were starting to like play around too much. And, and again, I, I reached out to people and asked what they thought of their opinions. And if I was being overprotective, cause I can be that way a lot. I don't let her be a kid sometimes because I try to, you know, keep her safe and not let anyone hurt her or upset her or, or let her upset anybody else. I try to show her the correct way on how to handle herself. So Okay. Why did you feel he was an appropriate caregiver for your daughter? Just because I just felt like they hung out like and was like, like they were, I don't know. I just felt like they were just like playing too much, like, like wrestling around and, and whatnot. But I didn't okay. think it was like immediate danger or anything like that. Okay. And how old is your brother? He's 23. Okay. And she was eight at the time. Is that correct? Correct. And you thought it was appropriate, even though you had concerns that they were maybe wrestling around, playing too much to leave her in his care and custody alone. They would, because they, they weren't that. I Again, I don't feel that they was it. No, I don't feel that they was in immediate danger. I don't feel like she was like, I don't feel like anything inappropriate was happening. So, yes, I did leave her in the care of him because I didn't feel that she was in any danger. Were you aware of the child pornography anime that he kept on his no. computer no again again in? no again because everyone has shunned me out of everything that has to do with my daughter so no i can't get no one to cooperate with me no matter how much i reach out okay so you had stated at least um the dhs worker stated that you had stated to her that you thought the investigation was closed Again, I said, I do not know what ha is going on with the investigation because no one is being in contact with me. Okay. Like when my rights have been taken away and they haven't. When Never. did you begin your current relationship? Um, like, you no, know, it was like March, July-ish, somewhere in there. Okay, that's a pretty big time frame. <laughs> Can you narrow it down a little bit further? <laughs> We started seeing each okay, other more. You, you are not to testify right now. Okay. You okay. We started, we started hanging out more frequently back in like July. Okay. Was your daughter ever around this individual? She was. Okay. okay. When did you move home from Maryland? Uh, in November of 21. So in 2017, um, Brooklyn was treated at a hospital because she ingested methamphetamines. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And those were your methamphetamines, weren't they? No. Or your boyfriend's? Supposedly. Okay. They were in your home, were they not? No, because it was not my home. Okay. They were in a place where you were staying, were they not? I, I mean, obviously they was, yes, because she ingested them. So, yes. Okay. Have you done any research to understand the correlation between um, children who ingest hard drugs and um, learning disabilities? No, but I don't really see the re like the like the relation into this case because if they were issues, then why was why was I able to see my daughter after that after these facts? I don't so, really see the correlation in that. So, so your daughter was was removed, but was removed to live with an adult. Or um, no, a fit no, and willing relative, is that correct? No, my daughter was never removed from my care. My rights have never been taken from me. I have I have made those decisions. Okay, so I you have, have a custody choices. case in the state of Ohio with your mother, was that correct? It's a temporary guardianship, yes. Okay, and that was in 2017? That was in 2016. Okay, so in 2016. And then your mother let Brooklyn come to your home, is that correct? Yes, she was staying, she was going to stay the night, yes. 
Okay. And she then ingested methamphetamines at your home. And then I left because I went my mom at the end of the street because I forgot her clothes bag in my mom's car. And by the time I came back, I, my daughter was acting weird. So I called 911 because I didn't know what was going on with my child. And yes, yeah, she got taken to the hospital. And that's when I found out that, that she had ingested methamphetamines. Yes. Okay. And she was three year old, three years old at that time? I believe so. Okay. And then she went back to live with your mother full time. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And until 2019, when the current guardianship began, is that correct? Correct. Okay. From 2017 until 2020, where were you? In and out of jail because I had made some poor decisions and, and was going down a path that, you know, uh, wasn't ideal. Okay. When's the last time you were incarcerated? Uh, in 2020 or, or yeah, it was in October of 2020. And what was that for? Uh, it was for my original charge back in 2015 for an attempted burglary and a possession of heroin. Okay. So was that a probation violation? Uh, and it, yes, it resulted in a probation violation. Okay. Are you uh, are you on any kind of probation or parole right now? No, I've currently I've I've completed parole. I've completed all the legal allegations that have been on me. I've successfully done that, and I've stayed out of trouble and maintained employment, and done what I've been what I've needed to do. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay, uh, Ms. Young, I noticed in the report that. Uh, it seems to indicate that uh, you have a little brother that you rely on uh, as part of your support system. Uh, <clears throat> is that the same brother that uh, your daughter him. last summer? No, no, ma'am. Um, is actually uh, is actually my little brother that I, I I grew up in a home with with my mother. Um, we are we're we're closer in Brooklyn and loves her loves her uncle and his, and her aunt. How many uh, brothers do you have? I have I have two living brothers and one deceased. Okay, so who is the brother that assaulted your child? Uh, that is part of my dad's side of the family. And his okay. name is Charles Applegate Jr. All right, is it also true that you and your father both uh, smoke cigarettes inside the house? Uh, we, we do, yes. Um, I don't have any other questions. Do you have any other questions, Ms. Hanson Grimes, based on my questions? I do, Your Honor. Is your brother, uh, Charles Applegate Jr., is he currently incarcerated? Uh, I'm, I'm not that I know of. Uh, I know that he's been picked up a couple of times for disorderly conduct and a, paraphern and a drug paraphernalia, but his whereabouts and where he's living at, it, I have I have no idea. So he, if to I your did, knowledge... To your knowledge, he's currently AWOL because he was arrested on this on one of those charges. Is that correct? Uh, yes, to my knowledge. Okay. And so you don't know his whereabouts, but um, has he contacted you recently? No, he has not. Okay. Did you ever indicate to the guardian, uh, Ms. Sanders, that you had concerns specifically on the fact that Brooklyn, while in your care, was running around naked in front of Charles? You know, I never you didn't do that. You didn't send her a text message that stated that um, she was not to, sitting close to him like that. She didn't need to be sitting close to him like that. He's way older than you. I caught you jumping out of the shower wrapped in a towel. And I told her to run to her room and not to be like that in front of CJ. No, no, no. no. So again, so those again are reworded and not my words. So no. So if I show the court your text message right now, these are not your words? No, please, you you can show the court them because I've never said that she, I, she ran out and did any of that. I said I was concerned that she was coming out of the shower in a towel and coming out in the living room and talking to him, yes. And that I had told her to go into her room to get changed and dressed, and that's what we do. We don't walk around in towels. In front of 23-year-old men that you sit too close to? Or in front of anybody. Okay, but you had concerns. You had concerns. Is that a fair well, statement? Wouldn't anybody, wouldn't anybody be concerned if their child was running around in a towel in front of adults? Or is that normal? 
I mean, I feel that the fact that you identified that perhaps there was a closeness that was not appropriate shows that your level of concern she's, was not that of a eight. normal family. She's eight and she's eight and doesn't know. So she has to be taught or, you know, coached and, t- you know, told how to, how to, how to act and how to behave. So no, I don't think I was like concerned to the, to the extreme like that. I think it was, it was a, it was a behavior that needed to be corrected. And I did. Okay. And how did you address that behavior with Charles, the adult? What did he do? He was sitting in the living room. He, I mean, it's not like he was like, Hey, Brooklyn, come out here in your towel, please. Like, he, I mean, what was to correct for him? He was sitting in the, he was sitting in the living room. Okay. If she's sitting too close to him, you don't bring it up to him at all. I addressed both of them on the couch and I said that it looks very inappropriate that you guys are sitting that close to each other. You guys need to separate is what I said. And you had uh, stated earlier that they were wrestling around and you had viewed that on an occasion too. Is that correct? I, I said that they, they, yeah, they play, they play horse around. Yes. They, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's 23 years old and he, and she's eight. And I mean, I still play around, wrestle around with her. Like, I didn't see the harm in that. But after all these incidences, you still thought he was reliable child care. I didn't see no immediate danger. No, I didn't think that he would do anything like that. So, um, no, I didn't. I didn't think that it was. Did you look wrong. into other child care? Yeah, I did. My uncle, uh, my little brother on my mom's side, he would come and get her and they would pick her up. And and I, I reached out to the help that I had. Yes. But I, it's hard to get daycare when you only have her for so long of a period of time. And she came to stay with you this summer because you had, quote unquote, been showing that you were doing so well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, she can. And she'd stay with me last summer, too. So Miss Sanders had has done her best to facilitate parenting time in a relationship with you in Brooklyn. Is that correct? Um, I think that I'm the one that does that. I think I'm the one that reaches out. I'm the one that asks. I'm the one that drives the 240 something miles up there every time to pick her up and drop her off. So no, I don't think that she orchestrates it. I think I do. And then she agrees. Okay. But there's no parenting time order right now. So she doesn't have to agree, would she? My rights are not being taken. Am I in court for fighting for custody? Because I'm, maybe I'm confused on who filed this case and, and what I'm actually fighting for. Because I believe that my rights have never been legally taken from me. And if these were concerns, then she should have filed for custody of my child. And and that's how I feel. Because I don't feel that I've done anything I've done the best I could for her. And I've always made, no matter how messed up my life has been, I will always put her needs and her and her priorities ahead of my feelings or anybody else's feelings. So no, I feel like I've made the best decisions for my daughter and, and I, and I will continue to do that regardless of anybody's opinions. I have nothing further, your honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deputy, would you swear Ms. Paula Mary for us, please? You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So I'll be glad. I do. <clears throat> Ms. Mary, I have your uh, report and I appreciate your investigation efforts. Is there anything you'd like to add to that on the record or share your recommendations? So my recommendation would not be to terminate the guardianship at this time. Um, the two, so 2017, uh, when she ingested meth, she was in her mother's care. Uh, at that time, um, when I interviewed Brooklyn, she made statements that she only feels safe when her mom is around. Um, if her mom has to leave and go to work, who is she gonna stay with? She's not gonna feel safe at her mom's home. Um, I'm concerned that she may have to testify. There's a grand jury, grand jury indictment that's pending. Um, she feels safe where she is right now. All of her needs are being met. <clears throat> she has an IEP and so her speech is, um, delayed some and so they are working on that um she's just she wants to stay where she is thank you questions miss hansen grimes uh miss barry you have read the reports from dhs in ohio is that correct yes okay and I, i'm sorry if they're not called that but for our purposes you you know who i'm speaking of is that correct yes 
Okay. Um, and to your knowledge, uh, Ms. Young indicates that there are many falsities in these in these reports. Based on your investigations, do you believe that what you've seen, what you've reviewed, and what is written in the reports is summarized uh, pretty on point with what the Ohio investigation says in the report that was provided to Ms. Young in the court today? Yes, I do believe it's very truthful. Okay, and you were able to review um, police reports regarding the incident, the criminal investigation, and um, also the child protective service investigations um, from prior uh, times, including the 2017 case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Are there any witnesses you'd like me to hear from today? Right. I call uh, I call Melissa Sanders, and you're the guardian of Brooklyn. Is that correct? Is that correct? correct? Yes. Okay. And how long has she been residing in your home? Uh, just over four years now. Okay. And um, you petitioned this court to become a formal guardian and a full guardian of uh, Brooklyn in 2019. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And why did you do that? Why did you feel that that was appropriate? Um, I, I needed to be able to make legal decisions for her. Um, I was, I was called, her mom was incarcerated. Her grandma in Ohio couldn't take care of her anymore. And that was the way that I could get her in school, make medical decisions. And what was the situation like at the former guardian's uh, house, the grandmother's? Um, a drug abuse, a, a lot of drug abuse, neglect on Brooklyn's part. She just, she wasn't safe. Okay. Have you received any financial assistance in order to provide care for Brooklyn since you took her into your home from the uh, parents? No. Do you have a close relationship with Brooklyn? I do, yes. Okay. Does, um, does she view your family? as her family yeah yeah okay. she knows her immediate family but this is also her family i mean she's pretty much grown up here for the last four years and um your daughter is in fact related to brooklyn is that correct yes sierra is her aunt on her dad's side so you had uh, heard the testimony of Ms. Young in that um, she feels that she is the one who facilitates parenting time, not you. Would you agree with that statement? Um, I mean, it's on her if she reaches out and she's available, but I mean, I, I try to make Brooklyn available for it all as well. You know, I mean. Have you ever set... Um, set up scheduled times for Miss Young to talk to Brooklyn or to um, call on the phone? Yeah, we set up a, I set up a weekly time just so that we can have that allotted time guaranteed that she can talk to her because, you know, with kids, you do get busy. So I wanted to have a set time for her to be able to have that time to catch up and, you know, quality time for that chat. Okay. Does she take advantage of that time? Um, She did a couple of times, but I mean, it's, there's issues missed weeks um does brooklyn know about does does brooklyn know that hey your mom might call on thursdays at yes. six or thursdays at seven yes so how does brooklyn feel when mom doesn't call i mean it makes her a little sad like i hope my mom calls today and then you know she doesn't call and it's it's close to i mean it's a school night so it's close to a bedtime we can't wait up all night waiting for the phone call but like and i just tell her well, maybe next week and has there ever been times when you've scheduled parenting time for Miss Young to come to your house and she's either not shown up or has shown up well past the time you guys have agreed to? Um, um, several times it's been pretty late, yeah. Okay, and when you say pretty late, what time would that be? Um, there's been times it's after 11 o'clock at night. Um, so on those days, does Brooklyn go to bed thinking her mom's not coming? No, she waits at the window watching and waiting. <laughs> okay. And I'm so at this point, um, Brooklyn has lived with you for four years. Uh, you're working 
with the school system in order to address some some um, needs that she has. Can you tell the court about those needs? Yeah, she has an IEP. Um, she was very behind when I first took in um, took her in. She was very behind, so she needed a lot of assistance. Um, she's has speech. She had a um, social services. She's got a math IEP, one for reading. And I mean, she's thriving. She's at a point now, she had ADHD. We had to address that. Um, we found a medication she's on, it's working well. Um, and she's she's really thriving now. It's She's in a good place. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Is she involved in any extracurricular activities? Yeah, she has been. Um, she's been in volleyball, basketball, and she's currently in gymnastics. Okay, so you, do you believe that you do your absolute best to provide a normal childhood for Brooklyn? 100% yes. Does Brooklyn want to stay in her home, to your knowledge? If, from what she tells me, yes. Yeah, she's, she's comfortable. She's happy here. She doesn't want to leave. She has her own room at your home? She does. And you have recently re-engaged her in counseling due to um, the events of this past summer. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, do you happen to know where the case stands at this point, the criminal case? Um, where I'm waiting. She will, we will have to go to Ohio. She will have to testify in front of a grand jury. Um, but it won't be for six to eight months is what I was told. Okay. Do you believe, um, how were you, oh, strike that. How were you informed that Brooklyn was harmed when she was at her mother's this summer? Um, Samantha texted me a couple hours after she talked to Brooklyn. Okay. And so, um, was that when she texted you the confession from CJ? Yes. Okay. Prior to that, did you um, have any, did she ever discuss with you prior to that day that she had concerns about their uh, behaviors with one another? Not before that, no. Okay. And after that, after she told you that, then did she go into um, incidences where she maybe should have known that maybe things were not appropriate or that she had concerns or described behaviors to you that gave you concerns? Yeah, the, those same behaviors were discussed earlier, you know, um, but she did also mention, you know, that she was concerned enough to where she thought about putting cameras up, um, but didn't get that far. And so, I mean, that's bothersome to me, you know, if you're that concerned to want to put cameras up to see something, then something's wrong. Um, at this point, uh, since this, uh, since summer, has Brooklyn been back to Ohio to visit her mom? She has not. Okay. But have you given time for, um, Samantha to come up to your home or come to the, to the area that you live in to see Brooklyn? Um, she reached out a couple of times. One was a last minute. Um, we had things going on, but I mean, if, she, you know, when she's here, if she, if we're available, like always, she's always welcome here. I've told her that too. I know it didn't work out the last two times. Um, Do you have concerns that if the guardianship was terminated, that um, the fact that Charles Applegate has not been apprehended, um, that Brooklyn would be in harm in the care of her mother or in that family home? I mean, I worry about that. I mean, I don't know what this guy's capable of. He's a, he's on meth. Um, I don't know if he has control of his behaviors and that that's, you know, for Brooklyn's sake, if she were there and he came there, like that could be traumatizing. Do you also um, have concerns that due to the fact that he is a member of this family, that if she was residing in the home, um, during the investigation that she may be influenced in one way or another um, to 
maybe less than what happened? Um, that is a possibility. Yeah, it's crossed my mind. Um, I would not, I would hope not, but I mean, I can't say that she wouldn't be influenced, you know, to protect her mom, protect, you know, thinking that she's protecting others. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other witnesses you'd like me to hear from? Um, I'll call Sierra Cadu. You have, how old are you? I'm 21. Okay. And um, so for the past four years, did you reside in um, in your mother's home or were you already out of the home at that when Brooklyn came to live with you or live with your mother? When Brooklyn came, I was living with my mother, but I uh, moved out shortly after I graduated high school. Okay. And Brooklyn is, is related to you how? She's my niece. She's my brother's daughter. Okay. Um, and this would be a brother who is not Miss um, Sanders' child. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, do you interact with your family and with Brooklyn often? Very often, yes. Do you believe, and you have uh, younger siblings as well, is that correct? Correct. And how old are they? My brother is 14 and my sister is 13. Okay. And do you see them interact with Brooklyn? Yes. Would you say that you view Brooklyn as a sibling? I don't view Brooklyn as a sibling, no. Do you think your brothers and sisters do, though? A hundred percent, yes. Okay. Do you not view her as a sibling because you had had that relationship prior to her living with you? I just think she's my niece. That's what she'll always be. Okay. Um, do you believe that she has fully fit into your family unit and that she is not treated any differently um, than any other child that lives in that home? No, she is treated equally. Okay. Do you believe that she is bonded to your mother as her caregiver? Yes. Does she look to your mother for affection and for, um, for discipline if she needs discipline and for authority? Yes. Okay. Does she love your mother? Yes. Okay. Um, does she interact appropriately with your brothers and sisters? Yes. Okay. Um, do you believe, in your opinion, that the guardianship should continue? Yes. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else you'd like me to hear from? No, Your Honor. And so um, if, if the court wouldn't mind, um, Ms. Horner and Ms. Cadu um, did take some time today because we weren't scheduled for today. If they could be excused. Okay. Uh, Ms. Young, did you have any questions for Ms. Yara Kadu or Ms. Christina uh, Horner? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Do you have any objection to them being allowed to leave? No. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kadu. Ms. Horner, you're welcome to exit our meeting. Okay, Ms. Young, did you have any questions for Ms. Melissa Sanders or for Ms. Paula Mary? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. All right. Is there anyone else you'd like me to hear from today? Uh, yeah, my boyfriend, Kenny. All right. Your name again, sir? Uh, my name is Kenny Smith. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, Ms. Young, uh, you've seen a nice demonstration from Ms. Hanson Grimes about how the question and answer uh, issue goes. Uh, your other options is simply um, allow him to share whatever uh, the two of you have decided you think is relevant for purposes of today's hearing. So do you have some questions for him to answer specifically, or would you just like him to testify? What is, what is your preference? Uh, I, I just want him to testify. All right, sir. Uh, what would you like me to know? Um, just that since I've known her, uh, Brooklyn has always been her number one priority. The goal is always her daughter, the the family atmosphere is what she's tried to build. Uh, she's worked very, very hard. I mean, she's she's raised her credit score. She's kept she's kept jobs. She's I mean, I don't see a reason why she wouldn't have her daughter. Um, she's also I mean, she's she's 
she's expecting now, and that's going to be Brooklyn's uh, sibling, her blood sibling. And um, I don't see any reason why that she shouldn't have her. Uh, I was here during the whole ordeal. Um, I mean, it happened so fast. I mean, it was just a matter of days, and she did go to the police. She did do what she was supposed to do. And, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, that's a hard, you know, it's, it's a hard situation and, you know, uh, so, but she definitely did do it. She's the one that removed him from the house and she did. So she did almost immediately, you know, I mean, you're talking within a couple of days he was gone. So, and he's not here. He's hasn't been here. He, He's not allowed here uh, by any member of the family. And I can attest to that. Um, and at this time, when she, when she got Brooklyn in the beginning of the summer, our relationship really had not fully started yet. She is not alone anymore. And um, I have I have I have three children. Uh, I've raised a, I've raised my daughter by myself. I've never been in trouble. Um, I've always took care of my kids and I trust her completely. And so I don't see any reason why she shouldn't have her daughter and her daughter wants to be here. So, I mean, she should be with her mother. She should be with her, you know, she should be with her siblings, her real ones. And, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. And she's worked so hard to get there. And so I just don't, yeah, I don't see a reason why that she shouldn't. So that's about all I can say, I guess. So are the two of you living together now? Yes. And how long have you been living together? Um, a few months. I mean, probably total, what, four or five. All right. Uh, and you mentioned that you were, you were there when the incident happened. Are you talking about... Um, what happened between uh, her brother and uh, Brooklyn at the home last summer? I was here when CJ came and confessed or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Right. Were you staying at the home at that time? Or were you visiting? Yep. And if you were visiting, were you visiting for overnights? Um... I wasn't, um, at that time it was, that was when I first started to probably hang out here every day. Okay. That was when so, it was getting serious. All right. Uh, was it noticeable to you uh, that CJ, as we're referring to him now, uh, was using any kind of uh, substances? Um, I didn't really... I didn't really pay attention to him too much, honestly. Um, I would walk in, you know, sometimes I would see him in the living room. Sometimes I wouldn't. And uh, Sam has the bottom floor of the home. And, I, you know, I would usually, you know, be down there with uh, her. So I didn't really. And like I said, this all happened so fast that, you know, uh, I no, I never I never seen anything with him. Okay. Have you ever seen Ms. Uh, Young or Samantha use any substances or are you aware of any of her substance uh, use history? Uh, she told me like her past stuff and what was it, 2016 or 17? And she told me that stuff, but I've never seen her use. All right. And I know that she wouldn't. I would, Good. I would leave my son with her. I would trust her with my sons. So, Two or four uh, and six. How often do you see your sons? As much as I can. What is uh, usually, do? usually probably three to four times a week is what I try to do. Uh, me and my, uh, me and my ex, we have a good relationship, so you know, uh, we try to co-parent the best way we possibly can, and we try to get along, and uh, you know, it's been going well so far. It's all about them, and we. 
put our emotions aside to whatever they might be, and it's always in the best interest of the boys. All right. Uh, when when the, the two of you or the uh, members of the household are relaxing, is there um, like what does that involve? Is does are people drinking alcohol or are they using marijuana? What does it look like typically for recreational use of any kind of legal or illegal substances that you've seen? Well, as a family as a whole, I mean. When it was, it was usually me, Sam, and Brooklyn hanging out. I mean, when she was here during the summer. And, yeah, I don't, I mean, I can't really remember a function where CJ was even a part of it. Okay, uh, what about you and Samantha? Do the two of you use alcohol or marijuana? No. I might have a drink every great now and again, but that's it. Do you have any? But not in the history? home now. Okay. Huh? Do you do you have any history of uh, struggles with uh, substances? Nope. Never been in trouble for anything like that. Never been had a, a felony or misdemeanor that had anything to do with drugs or alcohol. Okay. Do you have any other criminal history? Uh, no. I've never been. I've never had a felony. Uh, I've had. Like when I was younger, I had like a public intoxication once, and but nothing like ever. I've never been in any serious trouble. Okay. All right, um, Miss Hanson Grimes, do you have any questions for this witness? I do, Your Honor. Um, so you say, stated that you have uh, lived at the house for a couple months now, right? Yes. Okay, so why when DHS came over, did you say that you come in and out, not that you were fully residing in the household? Because that was in December. Um, I said I'm in and out, meaning like uh, I, when I come in the front door, I'm going downstairs. So it wasn't, that's a misinterpretation of like, it not, doesn't mean that I'm moving in and then moving out. Like it means I'm in, you see me for a second and I'm straight downstairs. Okay. That's where uh, she lives. So what does your uh, misdemeanor criminal history look like besides the public intoxication? Uh, I've had a couple of DUIs and that's it. But the last one was, I mean, 2016, I think. Okay. So do you have a driver's license? Yep. Okay. When was that restored? Oh, years ago. So I had a DUI in 2016, but I the, the one before that was 2007. Okay. And then what about the one before that? Because you said about three. 2005. So when I turned 21, I got I got in trouble a couple of times. Then I didn't get in trouble for a long time. And I got a DUI in 2016. I found out my wife was pregnant and I went to a bar and had a drink and I got pulled over on the way home. Um, so when the judge asked you if you had anything regarding drugs or alcohol, any criminal offenses, like you don't count those or? No, no it's a, the DUI just slipped my mind, honestly. It, I mean, like I said, I've had one in 2016. You're talking six years ago, going on seven years ago. Actually, yeah, seven years ago. And then the one before that is another, what, almost eight years before that. So it just slipped my mind. Okay. Where did you live prior to living in the Applegate house? Um, I lived with my ex. Okay. So when did your ex become your ex? Um, probably around March. Okay. And when did you move into this, into this home? You said it's been a couple months. Um, we, we got serious in around what, June or July. So I would say July. It was like mid July, mm -hmm. late July. Okay, and, so uh, so you did not, but you did not make yourself available for a background check or a um, uh, Department of Social Services investigation check as a full member of this household because you were just going in and out, even though you had lived there for almost five months at that time. No, I've lived I've lived here for five or six months right now. So that was in the very beginning of when we first Th started. This was last series. month, Mister. Mr. Smith. So I'm talking about when DHS came and reviewed the home and did a home study. 
you are listed as somebody who comes in and out of the house, not somebody who resides in there. And so if it was true, if, if what was being presented to DHS was truthful, you would have been there for a full home study investigation. And you would have stated that you had been residing in the home at least since June. Is that correct? When we first got serious in June or July, July, uh, I stayed here initially, and but I ended up getting an apartment, which was two blocks away. So the I, I now do not have the, I technically, I technically have it, but I do not use the apartment. Um, why? Uh, because we're starting a family. Okay, so why wouldn't you move Miss Young into your apartment? It's too, it, it was too small. I uh, shouldn't have... Uh, when I got it, I didn't, I didn't consider, I didn't consider all the children, <laughs> um, you know, and um, I, I was just trying to get some sort of start, you know, and my idea at the time, which was not the greatest idea, but was to start small and build up. But I also didn't account for, you know, it just not being big enough. So did, did Miss Young ever move into uh, any contents of her own into that apartment with you? Um, she. Not really. No. I mean. She uh, she helped me with the apartment. She has stayed there. She's stayed the night there. She's has she helped. She, you has, stu there? she has. Stu she does have stuff there. OK, so would it be fair to say that prior to this? or prior to knowing that she was going to be investigated, she maybe stayed there more often than she was staying at the Applegate house? No. So were you staying more often at the Applegate house? Yeah, honestly, I shouldn't even got the apartment because I was paying for it for no, no real reason. I mean, I was here much more than I was ever there. Okay, so you should have told the Department of Health and Human Services in Ohio that you were an occupant of the home, is that correct? Yeah, but I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't really even get questioned by them. Because you weren't, because you did not disclose that you were an occupant of the home. They, they didn't really ask me that. Uh, are you still legally married? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Young, is there anyone else you'd like me to hear from? No, ma'am. No, there isn't. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say before I make my decision? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, there's quite a bit I would like to, to say if that's okay. Well, now is your opportunity. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you one chance and Ms. Hanson Grimes one chance and then I'm going to make my decision. So anything you want me to know, tell me now. Okay, so uh, I mean, obviously, on black and white, my my track record hasn't been the greatest um, as legal wise, um, but as caring for my child and making the best decisions for her, regardless of if it was in my care or somebody else's, I have made those decisions when I have known that if there's a problem um, and it's become to my attention and I'm aware of it and it's not safe for my daughter, I've always made, I've always made the the right decision on on placement or being somewhere where she needs to be safe and, and well taken care of. I did ask Melissa to come down because when I became aware that my mom was no longer in a condition to be able to take care of my daughter, um, I asked her to come down because I didn't I didn't you know I didn't know what else or who else would be able to provide a home for her where she could um, you know get the her needs met like my dad's and dad and stuff he um he worked a lot so at the time it wasn't like you know i mean he couldn't really do that and my little brother and them they didn't have their own place and they were still staying with like um his dad and whatnot so i, I made an executive decision to call her and ask her for help um because she has been there and i do thank for thank her for everything that she has done um my daughter has prospered up there and she has and she's done everything that i've I, that i've thought would happen and could happen up there um and, and, and it's, it's been a mutual understanding and, and a long term goal that I get my things together to have the do my daughter placed back into my care. Um, and, and, and I did result in going to prison and, and but 
when I got out, since I've gotten out, I, I, I mean, I've, I've, I, I'm, I've enrolled in, in every child succeeds, um, which is a lady that comes out here every week and does home visits with me who, um, gives me information on how to parent or things that I am confused about. And she'll be part of my life until, um, my, my current child right now that I'm pregnant with is three years old. It's, it's a voluntarily program that I enrolled myself into. I, I have, um, I have, I mean, I have a, I have a letter here from Melissa herself stating that she's known me for 10 years and how much I've prospered and how well I'm doing. I also have a, a letter from my, um, from my, uh, counselor for therapy that I also enrolled myself in to, uh, take care of my mental health and uh, past trauma in my own personal life. Um, I've established a job. I, I've got, I now work for Pepsi with a career with benefits that can provide daycare services and um, the things that my daughter needs that I can, I can now provide that for her. And I have the stability to do that. And I have the family support and I, and I have the means to do it. And, and my daughter wants to be here. She, she's never not, she's always, she's never not wanted to be with me. And that's always been the goal. Um, you know, I, I'm not standing here saying I'm the best parent in the world because I've made mistakes and I can admit those and and I can also move past them too and continue to to not give up on my kid or or any goals that I have no matter how ugly the past is or how ugly a situation happens I will always make the right decision for her regardless if it's if it hurts me to do it because I do believe in her best well-being and I want her to be great and and I think she's resilient and I think it's awesome that she has prospered and she's done all that cuz she does she's done that she's put the work in to do that and and I and I'm I'm proud of her and I will not stop fighting for her so even if you tell me no today I'll file again and I'll keep doing it and I'll keep doing it until I get my daughter back because that's been the goal and it's always been my goal and I, and I love my daughter and I would never put her in harm's way purposefully or knowingly. I would never do that um, and it, it's a shame that that it's being worded and looked at like that. It, it is. Because my daughter don't want to, I mean, there's been situations where she, I mean, she tells me all the time, mom, just get a car, just get a house, and I come home. And and, and and she's right. If I had all those things, she could be here with me. And and, and that's what I've worked on. I've got a car, I've got a job, and i got a home. She's got her own room. I, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've been more than willing to help with any financial needs or anything that Brooklyn's ever needed. I've never not told her she can't have something or that I wouldn't help. Um, but the whole purpose of her going up there was so I could, so I could financially get on my feet and, and just be a better, a better parent, a better person, a better sister, a better daughter. And I've, and I've done that. And in the matter of two years, I've, I've accomplished quite a bit, a lot actually. And I, and I'm proud of myself for not giving up because most people would especially with background like mine, it's not pretty. It's not. And, and I'm not going to lie to you and say that it is or, you know, and, and that I've never made a mistake or, you know, or anything. I'm a new mom. Uh, um, I've never not been in her life. I'm actually her only parent that's actually never not been in her life, whether I'm on time or not on time. I've never not showed up. I've never told that little girl something and not done it. Um, you know, it's it's coming from where I come from. It's it's it hasn't been easy. It just hasn't been easy at all. But I I I don't want to have another baby. And then she continued to stay up there, and she's wondering why I can take care of this one, but I can't take care of her. You know, because she. I mean, I don't have an answer for that. Because I can. I can do that. And and it's been a shame that I haven't been able to disclose and talk to my daughter openly because I accommodate everybody else's wants or needs or thoughts or opinions on how I should talk to my kid or it gets monitored like my rights have been taken from me and they haven't. It's hard for me to co-parent or me be a part of her life and watch her grow and and be a part of all that when I'm a state away. And 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 I don't want that. I want to be a part of her life. and I. And I want to see her play sports. I want to be the one that goes there. 
I want to be the one that helps her with her homework. I want to be the, I, cause I can be today, maybe not a few years ago, but I admitted that, you know, it, but I can today. And I just don't see why she can't be with me because I, I don't know. I, I've worked really hard. I mean, I respect any decision that's be this placed or, or, or whatnot with her, but I'm not going to give up on her. So even if you tell me no today, I'm going to file again and I'll do it again and I'll keep traveling and I'll keep doing all this work and I'll keep putting in the effort because she deserves that and she deserves to be with her parent. I don't know. That's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Hanson Grimes. Your Honor, when we have, and the court is well aware that when we have a guardianship that has lasted more than one year, um, that we, as in the court, um, needs to look at whether or not it would be in the best interest of the minor child in order to, um, to terminate that guardianship. Um, and in this case, we have a child who, not only in a guardianship in this state, but a guardianship in the state of Ohio, who has spent over half of her life out of the care and custody of this, of her mother. Um, and while I know that Miss Young is in a different place today, so she says, than she was all those years ago, um, certain things, even in her closing, she says she has a new job. Well, this is in a month. So we don't have stability of employment. We didn't have honesty with the DHS worker that, that the boyfriend who's legally married to somebody else is actually living in the home, um, who has multiple DUIs that he's willing to cop to, let alone maybe not felony, because it's very clear that they were not felonies, but other charges that may or may not have been able to be put forth if there was an open and honest report made to the Department of Health and Human Services in Ohio. Um, you know, they are very clear that, you know, my boyfriend, Kenny, comes in, in and out of the house, but he doesn't live there, Okay. Well, he does live there and he has lived there since June. Um, and, or maybe they live in his apartment, but they knew that the apartment wouldn't pass a home check. And that's why they didn't offer that up. I, I think that there has been a concerted effort on behalf of Ms. Young to maybe put some paint over some, some cracks that are showing. Um, the fact is she has changed her job and whether that's a better gain of employment, we don't know. She didn't mention that she worked for Pepsi until her closing. Um, she did not say that I, you know, I had a great opportunity. I moved on to another, um, we know that she was been in a very brief relationship and she is pregnant. Okay. And that we also do have a grand jury indictment for a sibling who had perpetuated, allegedly perpetuated harm upon this child because he was delegated in the role of having easy access. There has been allegations of child pornography that was found on, that was found on his computer. Um, that is listed in the report by Ms. Mary. Um, there were concerns stated from the mother um, to the guardian that she saw, and maybe it was an oversight at the time, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that Although not Miss Young's fault, and it certainly is not her fault, her intuition was telling her something and she didn't listen to it. And ultimately, Brooklyn was harmed. Um, having Brooklyn back in this home where she lives with her parents, who are the parents of the alleged perpetrator, at this point in time would certainly not be appropriate. It could lead to a, a tampering with that witness for their influence. And the fact of the matter is, is despite her, her uh, trying to state to the contrary, she did report that her ch dad, Charles, is pushing for Samantha to get back into her care. That's a pretty, that's a pretty direct statement. And Miss Young is nothing if not eloquent. And so Your I Honor. think she said what she meant. And I think she means what she says. Your um, Honor, can, can I say something? Ma'am, 
Ms. Young, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a chance after Ms. Hanson Grimes is done. I've given you a lot of time already, and I understand, but I understand you may want to respond to some of the things Ms. Hanson Grimes has said. Thank because you. Because you are the petitioner, I'll give you a moment after she's finished to give me any other brief comments, okay? Thank you. All right. And when go we ahead. go back to the um, best interests of the minor that are used in minor guardianship proceedings, we have seen that there is a showing that there is love and affection between the guardian and the um, and the child. That the cap the capacity um, to give the child love and affection and guidance and continue to educate and raise the child is, is there. That um, that Miss Sanders. I mean, you've heard from Miss Young that she has provided no financial assistance whatsoever because that's why she put her there is so that she could get financially on her feet. And Ms. Sanders has taken over that role um, without any help from either parent. Um, the length of the time that she has lived there has been over four years. That's a considerable amount of time when the child is only nine. The permanency as a family unit, um, she has resided in the same home since the guardianship began and as she would today and as she would in the future. The moral fitness is of the party. Nobody is questioning Melissa Sanders' moral fitness at this point. Um, I do think that Miss Young is trying to paint herself in a light most favorable to the court um, in perhaps some of her recollection from what she told the Department of Health and Human Services and um, what she testified to today um, had that in mind. Uh, the mental and physical health of the parties involved, I, I don't think that there's any doubt that both parties are physically able to care for this nine-year-old. Um, the home, school, and community record. Uh, you heard testimony from Ms. Sanders that when Brooklyn came into her home at the age of five, she was considerably behind in her educational pursuits. Um, she has reached out, she has gotten services, and now um, Brooklyn is, is thriving and flourishing in a way that she can because she has the supportive services in her life. The reasonable preference of the child, I think that any child at the age of nine loves the idea of being a family and would love to be a part of having younger siblings, but ultimately, she just as she told Miss Paula Mary, she wants to stay because she feels safe at Melissa's house. The only thing she doesn't like is when the dog poops in the driveway and she steps in it. You know, contrary to I feel safe when my mom is there, but not any other time in that home. And quite frankly, that home is a home where harm was perpetrated upon her. Um, so to to return her back there and then to have to go through um a grueling process of uh, testifying before a grand jury at the tender age of nine, I can't even imagine. Um, I don't know if there's any domestic violence. Um, there was no testimony regarding that. Um, the party's willingness, Ms. Sanders has been willing to facilitate. She really worked with Ms. Young to allow Brooklyn to go and stay with her for the summer to see how, as a trial run, how that would go. And unfortunately, it didn't go well. Um, so I think that Miss Sanders has been very mindful of the fact that she is not trying to distance Miss Young, but she is here for Brooklyn. And that's who she needs to be here for. Um, I ask you to also consider the fact that Miss Young is going to be new to parenthood in a new relationship in maybe this home, maybe the apartment that they're going to live in. And that at this point in time, it's not in the best interest of Brooklyn to go home. Okay. I appreciate all the work that Miss Young has done, but we're not here for Miss Young. We're here for Brooklyn. At this point in time, I ask that you rule um, in light of the recommendation made by the Department of Health and Human Services, and that you deny the petition to terminate the guardianship of Brooklyn can do and leave her in the full guardianship um, with Melissa Sanders. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Young, uh, as promised, I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, respond, uh, but please keep in mind that I have already heard a lot. So yeah. please try not to repeat, and I have been listening. So I would okay. appreciate it if you could try not to repeat things you've already said. That okay. Said, yeah. What would you yes, like to say? Um, I, so just a, a few things to, to, to piggyback off of what the, she said. Um, 
in her in, in Brooklyn statement, all of the things that she said about pooping and all that and all that stuff. Um, she also stated that she knew how old CJ was, um, the exact age. And yesterday when I was on the phone with her, I, I asked her exactly how old CJ was and she couldn't give me that answer. She gave me five other answers before she gave me the right answer. So I, I do believe that a lot of the stuff that she that she says has been installed or told or or coached into and into believing or thinking or saying because some of the things that she says it, it, it it's obviously been repeated because they've never been said to her by me so I I, I mean they have to have been said by somebody else and, and I know I'm not trying to paint a light of anything uh, I, yes I did get a better career um, job and I took advantage of that and I, I I just I just don't I don't feel that uh, I don't I don't agree with everything that she's saying. Um, I am a new parent. Uh, I have a TPO order against CJ Applegate, so he can't no longer come in or be a a, a threat to me or my daughter because it's against both of us. Um, so, I, you know, him showing up and my dad fully agrees with it, regardless if it's his son or not. He he knew right from wrong. And my dad would never put, you know, or chance or jeopardize anything like that when he's encouraging me, not pushing me, encouraging me to to do better and be better. And and in half in half the four years I was in prison for two of them. So I don't really know how I'm supposed to be you know, like, uh, or get better when I'm incarcerated and there's nothing I can do besides my time and pay, you know, my, my mistakes away. And, but since I've been out and been able to make choices on my own and, and do things, it's been two years and, and I've come a long way. And, and that's, that's, it's, and, 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 and I mean, and, and, and with Brooklyn's care, I mean, she's she's broken her arm, she's broken her wrist. She had a black eye one time when I called on Facetime, where she told me that her brother was holding her by her ankles, and he accidentally let go of her, and she busted her eye open. And then it wasn't, but in September or something like that, where Melissa sent me a picture of her at the volleyball game where she had a big knot on her forehead, and when I asked her about it, she said, "Oh, I didn't even notice it, but I had noticed it in a picture." So I mean. I mean, we could tit for tat on what's real and what's not, you know, um, and go back and forth on assumptions of everything on who's better, or who's not better. But at the end of the day, I can provide food, a home, transportation, any kind of needs that she absolutely needs. And and I don't I don't feel that uh, my home is any any different than hers. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, uh, well, the court finds all interested parties were given notice for purposes of the hearing today on the request to terminate this minor guardianship for this child. I certainly was able to hear from many of the people that are heavily involved in the daily care of this child, as well as from the Department of Health and Human Services, and by extension, the investigation of Ohio into that same uh, environment. So thank you one more time, Ms. Mayor. Uh, you're able to get into, um, you know, some areas that even some of our guardian ad items aren't given access to so and with your procedures and protocols i really appreciate you guys being available and willing and i know it's in order through the statute too but it really is very useful to me in looking at guardianships to have your investigations all right this is a full guardianship uh it will uh and i will explain my findings further uh but it is i do find and will be ordering that it is in the best interest of the minor that the guardianship will be continued and I will also explain my findings to support uh, the order, uh, which will further reflect that the minor has resided with the guardian for more than one year. There's no factual uh, contest on that point. Uh, the parent uh, here uh, has not provided the minor with parental care, love, guidance, and attention appropriate for the child. And I'll go through the findings that support that in a moment. I also find further that a substantial disruption of the parent-child relationship has resulted and that there is clear and convincing evidence that is in the best interest of the minor to continue the guardianship. So that is what the order will say. Uh, in addition to that, it will indicate that the petition is denied on the merits. And uh, the reason is, the reasons are this. 
guided by MCL 700.5101, the court is asked to look uh, at the clear and convincing evidence in this case to determine uh, whether it's in the best interest of the child to continue the guardianship. Those best interest factors are indicated in this section 5101. They were uh, explored by Ms. Hansen Grimes, uh, and rightfully so, in many uh, aspects that evidence was uncontroverted and, if anything, supported uh, by uh, Ms. Paula Mary. As it relates to the best interest factors, this court will go through those as well. The love, affection, and other emotional ties existing between the parties involved and the child. Um, so there have been a lot of uh, things that have happened during the course of this child's life uh, that have interfered with her ability to form uh, love, affection, and emotional ties that would exist typically between a parent and child. That is, of course, inclusive of uh, some of the criminality that separated this parent from that child. Uh, for a very significant period of time, two years, according to her testimony. Uh, there's also uh, the fact that um, the child was harmed not once but twice while in the care of her mother, first by ingesting uh, methamphetamines uh, when she was uh, apparently unsupervised at the age of approximately three years old. Um, and then again last summer as a result of uh, a very serious uh, allegation of sexual assault that according to the testimony that I've heard today, uh, this person has admitted to, and that child will have to uh, testify before a grand jury in order to pursue the prosecution of uh, that individual who is a family member of hers, uh, that did occur in the care of her mother in the home where the mother is continuing to reside. And as Ms. Hans Grimes pointed out, uh, if I were to grant the request, uh, the child would have to enter back into that household, that environment uh, with those family members, with the exception of the perpetrator, uh, but nevertheless, uh, that alone, I have to consider uh, would be uh, rather traumatic for the child in the least, at the least. So the, the relationship between this child and this parent uh, is, is uh, significantly disrupted as a result of those major incidents, but also because of, uh, as compared to the place where she is residing now, uh, she is getting uh, specialized care. This is a child who has significant special needs, uh, potentially as a result of ingesting methamphetamines as a, at a very young age, uh, who has relied uh, exclusively on her guardian to make sure that she receives uh, IEP services, uh, speech therapy services, uh, and attention for developmental delays that she has had as a result of um, likely the environment of her grandmother initially, and then potentially that uh, ingestion of the methamphetamines. And she has had a stable environment uh, in which she has been able to overcome some of those challenges and continue to make progress in overcoming those challenges in a very loving and affectionate home where she's also bonded with the other members of that household, including her aunt, as well as uh, some of the siblings that live in that home that view her as a sibling as well. So I will not uh, ignore the fact that uh, this particular factor by far uh, ways in favor of the uh, guardian uh, who has provided that love, affection, and uh, developed that emotional tie on a very practical basis in addition to um, the sort of intangible aspect that this factor asks the court and the parties to look at. The second factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give the child love, affection, and guidance, and to continue educating and raising the child and the child's religion or creed, if any. Didn't hear anything about religion, uh, but clearly many of the things that I remarked on for the first factor support uh, the finding in favor of the uh, guardian as it relates to the second factor. Um, she is dedicated to continuing to guide this child in her uh, special education needs, uh, physical, mental, and emotional needs uh, around both what she's struggling with and, uh, of course, the new struggles as a result of the incident that happened last summer. Uh, factor three, the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to provide the child with food, clothing, medical care, or other remedial care recognized and permitted under the laws of this state in place of medical care and other material needs. I want to explore this uh, a little bit because uh, I'm going to take a moment here to uh, recognize the progress that the mother has made. Uh, she is no longer uh, under the probation or supervision of any court. Uh, she's clearly not incarcerated, which is great progress. Uh, she appears to have um, gotten a handle on some of the substance abuse issues that she struggled with in the past. Um, and all of those things are necessary and important uh, to get to the next piece, which is uh, a steady job and a home and uh, a demonstrated track record 
that would allow me to find that she would be able to provide this child with food, clothing, medical care, or other remedial care. Uh, she currently resides in the home of her father, according to her testimony. Uh, I did not hear about any rent that was associated with that or any contribution that she makes to that household. Uh, we, she also recognized that she did not, she has not provided any kind of monetary support uh, for the guardian. I'm sure there have been things here and there that she's done uh, to support the child, uh, but on a regular daily basis of providing food, clothing, medical care, and other remedial care uh, clearly weighs in factor of guardian. Uh, what I would like to see for further progress, and I'm going to outline this very specifically for you, Ms. Young. Uh, so you, you told us today that uh, the reason that you uh, elected to allow the guardianship is so that you could get on your feet. And I think that encompasses many of the things we've talked about today with regard to maintaining sobriety and employment and housing. Um, but, and I understand now that you're pregnant, you have some difficult uh, decisions to make around that as far as where you're going to be living. But what I would have liked to have seen you do in order to show me that you are dedicated to uh, developing your emotional bond with your child and providing for her is to live near her. Uh, I, have, I have no reason to believe that you could not have secured a, uh, an apartment up here, an area that would allow you to see Brooklyn on a daily basis, that would allow you to be able to participate with her medical care, her IEP care, uh, her school, to go to her sporting events, all the things that you want to do. Uh, with your daughter could have been uh, something you could have accomplished in the last four years by simply making sure that you are in a physical location that would allow you to do that. I didn't see any reason, I heard no reason to understand why you would have been required to live uh, somewhere that had such a distinct physical distance from this child. Uh, and if you were really in a place where you could provide her with food, clothing, shelter, medical care, uh, then you could have done that near her and uh, been doing that for her. The request for me to send her to you um, does not reflect a child-centered uh, perspective. The child-centered perspective would have been one that I just articulated where you make yourself available to the child, recognizing that many of the difficulties that she is in now are a direct result of the decisions that have been made by you over the course of her very short life up to this point. So putting her first means literally putting her first and not asking her to be uh, yanked out of an environment where she's lived in a very stable, satisfactory environment, uh, needs that continuity and has been there for at least four years where she's been doing well, uh, is certainly not in her best interest. And I look forward to a time when you can recognize that as well. The permanence is a family uh, unit of the existing or proposed custodial home also is a factor of the guardian. Uh, she's maintained that home uh, with, uh, children in it that have a sibling uh, relationship with her at this point in time. The proposed home is again one where uh, she suffered serious sexual harm, uh, but also uh, seems to be a temporary, potentially temporary situation as far as the current uh, boyfriend goes. Um, the, the grandfather is there, uh, but I have no indication to understand this would be a permanent arrangement, especially considering the fact that the uh, future father of this child still remains uh, married to another person and uh, is rather um, elusive about whether or not he is, how long he's been there, whether or not he's going to stay there. Uh, so I, clearly this weighs in fact in uh, favor of the guardian and as an environment in general uh, that would certainly serve the child's best interest uh, for her to be able to remain in that uh, family unit that has been functioning uh, in a healthy way for the last four years. Moral fitness of the parties involved. Uh, our guardian has never had uh, any kind of, that I've heard, any kind of criminal history or involvement with the Department of Health and Human Services in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, uh, and I'm sure not in a vacuum, um, the mother in this case has battled uh, criminal, criminal um, thinking patterns, uh, substance abuse, and many other things that uh, would compromise her ability to prioritize her child. Uh, that also goes for the mental and physical health of the parties involved. Uh, I, I do find that uh, prior substance use and the mental health of the mother uh, continues to be a very vibrant need for her. And I certainly hope she continues to maintain that in order to provide best uh, for the child that she uh, is carrying at this time. But also, uh, Ms. Sanders is not, uh, I've heard nothing about any mental or physical health issues that she may have had or has. Uh, so that factor weighs in her favor. Uh, her home, the child's homeschool and community record all uh, also 
Ways in favor of the uh, guardian since that is where she is and has been for the last four years and she's doing well, uh, receiving services through her education uh, and being able to be involved in activities and education in her community where she's thriving. Uh, the child's reasonable preference, uh, there was testimony from both sides about this, uh, but it does seem consistent to me that the child uh, would not only want to be of sufficient age to express a preference, but that she would uh, prefer to stay where she has been for the last four years uh, in, a, in an environment where she's comfortable, safe, uh, doing well, has friends, uh, and that she would like to continue to see her mother, uh, but that her preference would uh, be to stay here. And that was supported by uh, the testimony of Ms. Mary today. The party's willingness and ability to facilitate and encourage a close and continuing parent relationship between the child and his or her parent or parents. Uh, Ms. Sanders was very open about that. She would, would be and is more than willing to allow visitation. Um, understandably, she wants to create an environment where the child would be uh, safe, uh, safe from ingesting substances, safe from someone who is under the influence of substances and could harm her physically, emotionally, or sexually. Uh, so I fully support uh, structure, continued structure around that point. Uh, and further support that the mother uh, would be building a relationship with her child uh, in the best way possible, which would be in the environment of the child, rather than an environment where uh, she suffered sexual harm. So I would encourage you to continue visiting your child in her own community. Uh, but I do find that the factors uh, that, that, that certainly our guardian is willing and able and has demonstrated that ability to facilitate and encourage the relationship. And that one really is uh, on both sides there. I think well, everyone's recognized that the relationships here are uh, important to her. Domestic violence is not an issue that I've heard. Uh, and of course, the other factors to be considered would uh, simply include the harm that the child has suffered in the home uh, where the mother continues to reside. Uh, and depends on her grandfather uh, for that housing and uh, the harm that she suffered in that home, as well as uh, the harm that she suffered in the home, uh, ingesting methamphetamines in 2016 or 17, whatever that was. So those factors all um, support by clear and convincing evidence as court has uh, analyzed the findings and the order, uh, as I've already indicated, will reflect that. Unless there's any questions, that's